Good afternoon, folk. Uh, welcome to Book Lovers Corner for the 22nd of September 2020. We're being broadcast on the Wairapa Community Access Radio Station, Arrow FM 92.7. And this happens every fourth Tuesday of the month, 3.30 to 4.30 throughout the year. This is one of 12 community access radio stations in New Zealand and we are sponsored by Elmo's Books, our wonderful independent bookshop in Carterton. You can listen to our program live online by connecting in with Arrow FM or listen later via the podcast which you can download onto your device. The Book Lovers Corner can also be watched live on Wairapa TV Freeview Channel 41 and on YouTube. We'd appreciate any feedback you can offer by contacting the station's Facebook page. I'm Valda Kirkwood. The other members of the team who are together, all together, the three of us for the first time today, are Gareth Rapson. Greetings, Gareth. Good afternoon. And Steve Lawrence from Elmo's Bookshop, who is replacing his sister Sue, who has decamped to Waiheke Island. Hi, Velda. So, um, good to have you both here today, since we've been in sort of COVID restrictions to two per uh, session rather than the three. So it's great for the team of three to be together. And... uh, We've got Sue, who has is retaining a distance relationship with us by sending every month her notes from a far aisle, which I'll be reading out um, shortly. First of all, they're going to have a discussion of books that are walking out of the door at Elmo's, and if um, by looking through what I've seen, it's all very exciting. A lot of whole lot of new new books by authors whom I really enjoy. Uh, Then I'll read Sue's notes. Gareth's foci are Providence by Max Barry, old school uh, sci-fi, but fits in so well to our social media and data-driven world that we live in. Let Go My Hand by Edward Docks, which is dark humour at its best, as a father and three sons travel by minivan to Dignatus, the Swiss euthanasia hub. I'm really looking forward to hearing about that. Um, On Looking by Alexandra Horowitz, uh, Eleven Walks, New York Walks with Expert Eyes, and Mophead by Selena Tusitala Marsh. We may not get through all of them, and if we don't, some will be forwarded to next month. After the music break, we will, um, which will be about three minutes long, we'll get back, and Steve's foci will be uh, Frank Herbert's Dune, which I recall reading with great delight in my teenage years, or round about then. Um, Sam Coley's Coley's, State Highway 1, and C.S. Forrester's Greyhound. And I will talk, if there's any time remaining, I will talk a little on podcasts, which may in fact be forwarded to next month, depending on time. We will summarise the books that we've looked at and finish after about 55 minutes. So, Steve, how's it all going at Elmo's? Well, it's been going very well since, as I think I said last time, since the middle of May. Um, trade's been very good. And we are heading now into the time of the year when the publishers do get around to releasing more and better books. We've had some very interesting stuff, but I guess everybody has a view on the Christmas market, so we're starting to get some uh, much more prominent titles a um, couple I should mention that are coming up, and we should have had by now, but in f- it's all to do with difficulties in the supply chain. We're looking for, in terms of crime, the new Robert Galbraith, a.k.a. Oh, yes! J.K. Rowling, Cormoran Strike book. Yes. It's called Troubled Blood, which has caused all sorts of controversy because of the... Um, mixed gender of her uh, protagonist, which gets poor old JK into all sorts of strife. Now, is Cormac oh, go- actually going to hook up with the young lady? 
Has that happened yet, or is that... Well, no, it's always hinted at, and yeah. we're always yeah. waiting. Well, wasn't there at the end of the last one something to, with the wedding? He fetched up at the wedding. Yeah. And that went awry, didn't mm. it? The wedding went awry, the marriage went awry. So I'm not que- not quite sure what's going it's to happen. It's a happening thing. We just, yeah. we it just is happening. keep reading. Yeah. 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 The other one we're waiting for with great interest is The Evening and the Morning, which is by Ken Follett. So that's a precursor to The Pillars of the Earth. So, oh. is, is this another, you know, King's thousand page? King's, yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. It's, it's a huge hardback. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, well, hey, at the summer, we all need those big summer books. Well, we do. Um, in terms of crime, we've got a new Ian Rankin, uh, which is due in a couple of weeks called a song for the dark time so that's another rebus book we can if you'd like to put it up vertically that's I'm brilliant. Not sure th- these yeah. are um, a lot of these are um publishers pre um copy so i'm not even sure that'll be the cover. oh right okay but um, give me the pitch for, for rebus i mean there's been he's been around a, a long time he's written a lot of these yeah why, why do they work why are we still getting new ones well he was uh, rebus was probably the one of the first of the conflicted um, difficult um, lives, detectives, um, which be- then became the, the now go-to. The, yeah, now you don't want to. Dis- <laughs> they're you all damaged. You they know. all damaged alcoholics <laughs> who beat their wives and yeah. perhaps haven't murdered their kids, but are the, sorry about something. Right. Yeah, because I, I I'm just aware that I have reader friends who who are very excited about them, and I'm. Yeah. Going, I'm I'm just not sure. But when you read them, do you read them with a kind of Scottish accent? Is that how it works? or Probably be better. <laughs> and yeah. certainly with a Scotch. Okay. Oh, yeah, with a, okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because I always think of like Billy Collins and Glasgow and all that sort of um, Edinburgh. And I've been to Glasgow and... Mm. Well, he's in Edinburgh. Sort of, yeah. It seemed like such <laughs> a lovely place. I didn't get to the bad districts. There obviously, there's suburbs there that are, that are, that are pretty dark. Probably not anymore. Oh, okay. Right, here we go. <laughs> yeah. uh, what else? There's a new Joe Nesby. This is the cover. Uh, it's called The Kingdom. It's not a Harry Holley book, but a uh, good solid chunk of Norwegians being well, being mean to each other. I, I put a reserve in on that and found that there are many people in front of me. There's obviously quite a readership for Joe. I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so, um, and it sells well? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And it will be a good Christmassy... <laughs> yeah, I <listen>. see. <laughs> Here's a bit of Nordic, you know, angst for you for Christmas. Yeah, yeah exactly. Okay. Yeah, what have you got against me, sort of thing? <laughs> Our best selling climb writer is Anne Cleves. Uh, so, this is a new Vera. Um, and we've Great. been doing pretty well with this over the last 10 days or so. I've never read Anne either. I mean, uh, yeah. out of the sheltered life, but what's, 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 why you, is Anne? Did you see Shetland? Oh, yes. Well, Loved all those. Yeah. Oh, but you haven't seen Vera? Oh, I don't. I mean, I want to watch the movies, mm. the, the the TV shows. Oh, the book, I, I like the it. Shetlands. I, it's all good, you know. Well, so it, so are the. And this is where she's Vera's. moved south, isn't it? Yes. Down, no, no, oh. no, no. This is this is back to Vera. So she's been the the last Anne Cleves was set in oh, Devon yes, or that's Cornwall right. or something. Yes, so right. that yeah. was a different character. Yeah. But she's this is a Vera. Okay. Um. I haven't read this, probably never will, but there is a new Jodie Picoult, uh, which is worldwide into yesterday. Um, and <laughs> having talked about books we haven't got yet, we got these a week ago when we weren't supposed to get them till today. So everything's a bit messed up, but I have been a good boy and not sold any. Now, Jodie's, she she's, seems to have her pulse on contemporary issues and, and the big themes of modern life. She seems to land on them, mm. and um, I, I've read a couple of her earlier books. Not not kicked on with them, mm. um, but I did enjoy them. Yeah, yeah I'm sort of more boys stuff. <laughs> yeah, no, it's uh, hey, competent. Got a, she's got a readership. Mm. Um, so um, yeah, I'm looking forward to someone pitching it at me and saying <laughs> it. You know. <laughs> Well, you can come and buy one. But, Steve, what about these? Are we this what we, we were but really... No, that's we'll talk about those later. Oh, later. those a bit later. Okay. So, it's, um, so thank you. That's what's happening at Elmo's. And, mm. and there's a lot more as well. Uh, oh, really, yeah. some, it's, it's a lot of new, very popular authors mm. in the store at the moment. 
second. So, well worthwhile going and having a look at Elmo's. Uh, now, Sue's notes from a far aisle. I got this on Friday. Today we brave Waihikians are experienced, experiencing torrential rain, which I'm sure is battering my newly planted veggie seedlings. Anyway, it's a good day for reading. This past month I've followed up on authors you spoke about in the August program. Gareth reminded me of The Return by Hisham Mata, um, and it's a book that I've been meaning to read, and it didn't disappoint. It's a harrowing tale of Hisham's search for the truth, about his father's fate as a prisoner of Gaddafi in Libya and also an exploration of father-son relationships and family grief. So she's got a copy of this because hmm. it's not available readily. It's not in our well, library I've, system. I've, well, I've had it. I put it, went in before you talked about it because I had hmm. read, listened to it on a podcast. I had booked it in the library system and that was a couple of months back. Yeah, no, looking at the catalogue, it, it doesn't exist yet. But maybe these very good, kind librarians will listen to you. Or maybe even a friendly bookseller. Well, I think it's coming in. I mean, oh, they okay. wouldn't let you reserve it in the library yeah, if okay, it wasn't no, coming in. I, I, couldn't, so. I couldn't find it. Anyway, good work. Um, I also ordered the first in the Kate Shugak series by Dana Stabano from the library, which was one I re recommended last time. I picked this up yesterday and also checked to see if our local library had more in stock, found this to be so and luckily grabbed the second book, just in case. Well, I finished the first book yesterday and the second this morning, so it looks like a return trip to the library is in order. I can now see why you like this series, Valda. Strong characters, attention-grabbing stories, set in a fascinating part of the world. And so I am now, um, I have got... Uh, 14, 15 and 16 to return to the library and I have <laughs> uh, booked or uh, reserved uh, 17, 18 and 19. Right. I, I'm, I'm just racing through them and I am just loving it. We, I've, I have since read number one mm. and Gail, my wife, is reading, she's up to number three. Mm. Um, I have asked her to, to cherry pick them. Mm. I really want the very best mm. tales, so mm. maybe I'll need to talk to both of you to find out which are mm. the really good ones. But um, I, I, I did like that Alaskan setting and yeah, the, the it's a reservation. Very, well, I think it's very different setting, yeah. and in, in indigenous Alaskans as well. Yeah. And you learn you learn heaps. Yep. Quite painlessly through reading them. Yep. Uh, more from Sue. I've been passing the time with Stephen Fry's Incomplete and Utter History of Classical Music, published first in 2004. Very entertaining, and I've been dipping into it and searching for his recommendations via Spotify. Just to complete the picture, I have reread Philippa Gregory's novels about the Tradescant father and son, both called John. They were gardeners for both King James I and King Charles I, but more importantly, travelled in search of new plants to Europe, Russia and North America. They gave their name to a weed that is the curse of gardeners in this country. And we all know <laughs> Tradescant there. Um, so Philippa Gregory is a prolific writer of historical fiction and these two books, Early Joys and Virgin Earth, are both entertaining and informative and good to read if you're looking for something undemanding. And I think I'm, I'm certainly going to put them on my list. I think that sounds to be very interesting. You may also have already talked about the Booker Prize finalists. We haven't. All unfamiliar to me, but if they beat Hilary M Mantel... <laughs> I expect them all to be outstanding. Time will tell. And so, our, and, and I have looked at the Booker shortlist and have not, am not familiar with any of the writers. I have booked them all uh, or reserved them all at the library, but as yet they have, they're not really in the system. You can reserve them, but they. Hmm. Um, they won't have stop. Yeah. Steve, is that the sort of thing that you would. Take 
a, a, a sample? Or would you take the lot, or would you take? Oh, would we, you wait to get a feel a bit of momentum on one or two of them? Or no, no, we'd, we'd certainly stock the short list. The <laughs> the problem is, is is that everything. If we're not pre-ordering three months early for new titles, something that we don't know about sure. um, will yeah, take us a month yeah. to get. Yeah. Um, the girl in the mirror, we've only yeah. just got stock now, and it's you know probably fast. It's first flush of youth really but mm. oh okay so, so, so that's, yeah that's so we, we will get them all mm -hmm. um in fact i've and by by then there'll be substantial reviewing and people will be getting excited mm. about particular titles if that you know of, of interest mm. um so no, it certainly looks uh, an eclectic little bunch of, of new i mean instead of the the kind of the known and famous it's well they're almost uh, all american writers that's interesting, isn't it? Yeah. And that's no. the change from the book of being published in Britain. Well, it just used to have to be a Commonwealth writer. A common right, mm. yeah. But uh, yeah, not now. No, so, um, and that has made a difference, hasn't mm, it? Probably made a difference to the style and possibly the quality. I don't know. You mm. would think so. Mm. Watch the space. Okay. Mm. So, given watch the space, it's now over to you, Gareth, to talk about your books that you would like to right. do today i don't know which one you're going to start with well let's start with um a, 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 a smaller book mop head um by selena to salah marsh now steve you've had this book yep tell us a little bit how it went uh it goes pretty well it's um it's it's one of a number of books we're seeing a bit like the I'm going to get this wrong. The boy, the mole, the horse, and the. Anyway, it's it's as much about the illustrations and the words together, mm. and they're difficult books to know where to put in the shop. Um, I haven't put that with the young adult stuff, although it won mm. a children's book award. Um, yeah, because that that could easily sit in non-fiction. It could easily mm. sit in the graphic novels. It mm. could easily sit mm. in child children's literature. Um, and it, you could probably find a place for it a memoir. Mm. So it's kind of um, anyway. Let me let me just pitch it for you. Um, this this was published in two thousand and nineteen, and it won the Elsie Locke uh, Award for New Zealand's um, children's literature, and then it won the Supreme Award in twenty twenty for news of for the best children's and young adults book. So it really um, you know there was some the judges really sort of gave it the heads up um it's an inspir inspirational memoir of growing up pacifica in new zealand and um she's teased at school because of her hair i mean the, the subtitle of it is how your difference makes a difference and it's kind of about her mop head hair and she's conforming to fit in um but then one day sam hunt arrives with his unruly um <laughs> sam hunt um package of hear music songs and um, she decides to embrace her difference and be wild and let her hair go um, she takes us through a, the special moments in her life she's um, one of the first Samoan um, women to get a PhD and, and um, then she read her poem to the Queen in London and um, Samoan royalty um, she'd done readings for them met Barack Obama um, and then became our, our poet laureate in 1917 to 20, not 17 to 2019. Um, we've had, f I'm informed by the book that we've had, um, of the, we've had 11 poet laureates and five of them have been women and um, Selena is the youngest. It's funny, it's quirky. Um, she is New Zealand's best-selling poet laureate um her book fast talking pi fast Big talking pacific island have you got is that uh, I, I haven't seen it as a book but i've heard her recite the the poem at a why word thing that was done here in masterton a few weeks ago for national poetry day which was it was called why are apple worlds and then we had poetry in 20 different languages right. um, one of which was her contribution yeah but highly recommended um I think any young teenager would find something in that, and you know, it's well worth being in a school library. Um, and um, 
the, 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 it ends with her going home to Waiheke Island, which brings us back to Sue again. <laughs> um, I mean, and it was terrible to hear it had been raining in Waiheke and, you know, the margaritas had to be inside instead of rather outside. But The, the um, winemakers don't mind it raining this time of year. Yeah, she was doing <laughs> it. February, they get a bit grumpy. Yeah. <laughs> Second book, um, Providence by, by Max Barry, which is a nice, which is science fiction. Now, I, I don't read a lot of science fiction, but I will, if some title comes by, I guess, once a year or every now and then that really is looks interesting i'll probably give it a go um a book like this you know sci-fi at the shop oh no we people who read sci science fiction read science fiction they don't read much else sometimes um so yeah and people are always looking for something new and different yeah it's 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 a bit it's old school it's kind of like um takes me reminded me a little bit of space odyssey um arthur c clock uh, arthur c clark's 2001 remember Hal sort of takes over the ship mm. um, there's a there's a sort of element of that um, in it but it's also nicely social media data driven of our times mixed into it um, it's a speculative adventure of four people who are facing their most desperate hour on the edge of the universe um, there's first contact with this with aliens who are really out to take us out and this providence is um, a, a super spaceship that defends earth and it has it's enormous it's 5k long the the ship and it's got a, a crew of four and a, one of them is slightly um conflicted and but they've been chosen not really to run the ship but to be really good at social media <laughs> as the world <laughs> is totally sort of entranced and mesmerized this global audience for their podcasts and their little feeds very much like the space Space Lab, Sky Lab, or whatever it is up there, um, this ship is doing it. But while pursuing the enemy across space, these characters confront the unthinkable, and suddenly their communications are cut, their ship is becoming increasingly untrustworthy, um, and fans of science fiction will think um, Philip K. Dick, William Gibson, if you like that. Mm. Uh, but if you like movies, space movies by Spielberg or Ridley Scott, um, this is a book for you. Um, highly recommended. So, yeah, I think science fiction lost out in the last few years to the fantasies, the George R. R. Martin, dragons, and all that sort of stuff. Um, whereas, I think it's a pretty solid genre. I do too. And the libraries tend to often classify them together. They mm. kind of run them in there, whereas the, which must be very annoying for both fantasy fans and sci-fi fans. Mm. Um, the to be fair, we shelve them together. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I guess everybody's used to that. Um, which, and I'd like one in the future, really, to to little look at that fantasy genre, which I haven't really. I remember back in the day, Feast, Feist, if I yeah, Raymond Feast, Raymond. I remember Feist, reading I'm his sure. Sword of Shannara, those mm. sort of classics when I was <laughs> way younger. Um, and I'm thinking, whatever happened to that um, that genre? Well I, well, I liked Ursula Le Guin. Yeah. She was yeah. the one that I, I really enjoyed. Yeah, the um, another book, um, which I don't have the copy of it here, but it was called "Let Go My Hand" by um, Edward Dox. Now, our book club took this um, on board, and we took it on board because we've got a euthanasia boat um, looming up with us on October seventeenth, and um, we thought we'd discuss the book as a book club and and then the second part of the discussion would be on the big issue and we would you know un, you know mm -hmm. all state what we mm -hmm. you know and have a, a good old cut and thrust on that um the book is very much the, the tale of the father and his um his one of his sons start off um, crossing from dover into france and are going to travel by minivan across to switzerland um to go to the euthanasia hub and you may this kind of sounds rather bleak um you know the <laughs> final drive um and but then there's two other uh sons join them unexpectedly and so now there's the four of them um this is a very funny dark book and it seems like a dark topic lends itself to very black humor and these four the absolute the, the dialogue in this book is top shelf 
it is so cutting and funny um, that you know our, our book group were just entranced by the, the sort of the writing of, of docs on this. Um, it's, it's complex family secrets are getting teased out um, and we get and in the squabbles of the family there are the sort of flashes of truth and insights for all of us about not only euthanasia but about family dynamics. Um, the, and, and bad behavior is funny and these the sort of it kind of breaks your heart but um, you're kind of you can't stuff just chuckling all the way through the this this guy is, is a very good book now I've, I have three sons um, hopefully they're a little bit more um, <laughs> different than, than Lou Rolf and and Jack but um, they're, they're, it's kind of those, these three young men trying to make sense of a rather mad world and um, which I, I'm sure your sons are doing too. <laughs> yeah, well, and we're all are, really. Yeah. And, and I recommend this book to friends. It's, mm. it's kind of moving, emotional book. Um, love, sex, death, betrayal. And I learnt a lot. And at the end, there's a letter um, that he writes to one son or his sons. Absolutely terrific. And it reminded me of letters, um, I was trying to think, like Justice Mann, he wrote letters to his son... Um, the New Zealand book, you know, the one he did, Erebus. Mm. Yeah, and yeah. I thought those letters was yeah. that was one of the great book of yeah. letters. But this has this book has a solitary letter, which of which I must have I took notes down because I was thinking, is that something? Would I leave a letter to my sons? And um, so, and and it was just a just a terrific way as the book and it is beautifully the, the the end of it is beautiful. Um, compassionate book so uh, anyway that that was the book but then we got to our group went on the bigger issue and the vote around the room was we had one person who was going to vote against it really they were she was con quite conservative and was able to mount a good case for um, why she was voting that way and the rest of us um, were pretty positive we we're going to vote um, positively for it but it's a complicated issue mm -hmm. with, you know, and we really discussed it, how you would look at it with the different age people are going to look at this problem or this issue in a different way. Mm -hmm. A 20-year-old and a 7-year-old do not see this mm -hmm. in any way. And, and it was a terrific discussion. I'm sure New Zealand is enjoying that discussion now as we um, come towards that day when we're going to tick little boxes. So there we go. How are we going for time then? Uh... Have you got, you've got, I've got about one more, five but, minutes. Oh, look, I've got a little bit more time to get into. This is, now, this is a book I haven't read, but I feel I've read it. Um, and, <laughs> you've um, heard a lot about it. <laughs> yeah, and, 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 it, it's, and I've, it's, I've read, it's something I've, I've, I've pre preparing for the, an art, the art group, the Why Art Art Group, and um, so I'm, I'm taking, I was taking, looking at the book from a, looking at from the what artists would be interested in but and I discovered the book and I'll give it how the book came into my sites in fact I'll start with that there's a there's a little w website where you can get a newsletter it's called brain pickings by um, Mariah Papova Papova and a friend sent me something and I thought that is so fantastic so then I set it up and so now I get this weekly thing and it's brain picking and what what Maria does is that she looks at books and takes out the really best, the kernels, the great ideas of it on, and obviously, and as you read things, that you are being sent little tiny little links to the very short things of either a little bit of poetry or a great bit of art that goes with it, or just terrific thinking. And the one came in this afternoon, which was on the su Supreme Court judge, on it was about the five bits of law that had totally informed her life. Mm. Um, oh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg's life. Yeah. 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 And they were, you know, the Declaration of Independence, the Ten Commandments, this, you know, it was like mm. all various little, and it's, they're very short little articles mm. with, but can be expanded if you're in the mood to, and the themes I think would, would really, for people who love books, and it is book driven. Mm. Anyway, one came up, which was called On Looking, and it was 11 walks 
with expert eyes by Alexandra Horowitz, who's in our library system as a person who writes about the cognitive development of dogs. She's very interested in dog behaviour, um, and that's how we've got a book. But this book was about um, the art of looking, and it was... And it looks at urban life and how we spend our lives, and it argues that the art of seeing has to be learnt. That you don't. Mm. It's so. And it's like the art of listening, isn't it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. And it, it, she's a cognitive science, mm -hmm. and she's in, and it's a record of her um, of her quest to walk around a city block in New York with eleven different experts, same walk. Oh, fabulous! Eleven different people. That would be and, fantastic. Um, there's from an art from. And emerge with fresh eyes, mesmerised by the previously unseen things. Um, Horowitz argues that we we miss the majority of what was happening around us. It's adaptive ignorance. Um, we and we consider it concentration, but um, it's just self-defence, really, isn't it? You yeah. Can't, mm. Otherwise, but, you'd spend your whole life. Oh, that's right. Walking a hundred yeah. meters. Mm. Yeah, and she goes. It, it eases the cognitive overload, which I thought was very good. <laughs> yeah. Um, and she that's walks around the yeah. block with herself. <laughs> so she goes around, and we get that. Then she goes, takes a toddler, mm. and walks around. And we'll, they get that. Then an artist. Then a designer, a geologist, um, a naturalist, a doctor, uh, a blind person and a sound engineer. And not a dog, because a dog give, would give you a whole different... And finally, a dog. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, the, the, the book is an invitation to the art of observation. Now, I would expand out to the art group, the art, what, what happened with the artist's walk, because that was pretty, pretty interesting. So, um, that's, the, that's the art of looking. And I don't think that book has been published... In New Zealand, it was it was published actually in 2014. Uh, I've never seen it. But I've never just, heard of it. Yeah, and it's a sort of, and it's about this this little newsletter you get is about books that um, have kind of we've missed, but it had some interesting ideas. A lot of them are very ideas. We have seen them; they're kind of classics. But um, recommend you that brain pickings if you um, want to have a have a little look and get a feel for what, how that works. Thank you, and I think that's a perfect timing to go to our music for today, which is a um, from the CD Beauty Spot by the NZSO, and it's the um, Intermezzo from Cavalera Rusticana.
Welcome back to Book Lovers Corner, Arrow FM 92.7, every fourth Tuesday of the month. And we have here today myself, Valda Kirkwood, uh, Steve Lawrence from Elmo's Bookshop in Carterton, and Gareth Rapson. And I think now it's your turn, Steve, to focus on your three books that you've got here please yeah well one's a brand new book and new zealand novel uh and the other two are a throwback to my childhood which i will <laughs> and, and come also on to. to some of our other some some of our other childhoods too so well i hope so um yeah. so first thing i want to talk about is state highway one by sam coley now this is a first novel uh, Sam Coley, he actually lives in Australia, but he was brought up in Auckland. In 2017, he won an Australian Emerging Writers Prize, which included basically a contract with Hachette. So they have published his first novel and done a pretty good job with it. Uh, it it's called State Highway 1 because it's kind of a road trip. Uh, the protagonist, Alex Preston... Uh, he's a young guy, he's about to become 21, and for the last three years he's been living in Dubai working in the music industry when he gets a phone call to say that both his parents have been killed in a car accident. So the book starts uh, with him and his sister Amy heading up to Cape Rayinga after the funeral to farewell the spirits of their parents. Uh, and it's a lovely thing to do. Yeah, well, pretty shook up, kids. Yeah. It's a very Maori idea. Is that are they Maori? Is that no, okay? no. Okay, no, no. Still, I think it's a lovely thing to do. Yeah, they are children of privilege. Yes. Their parents were internationally renowned filmmakers, which is why I wonder about the Preston thing. Maybe he didn't know about Gaylene, but um, it seemed oh. pointed. <laughs> it does. Yeah. It does actually. <laughs> but I, I suspect. Well, I'm not sure why that's yeah. about. Um, so while they're up at Cape Reinga, uh his sister Amy says, well, I don't want to go home. And he's here for another two weeks before he has to go back to Dubai. So they agree that he and, that he and his sister will travel the length of State Highway 1 to the bottom of South of Stewart Island, which you actually can't get to by road. Um, that's true. And just hang out until he has to go back to Dubai. So the book is set in 2015, but you have to be very careful with every chapter heading because the chapters all start at completely different points in time from 2008 Uh onwards. So you have to be pretty careful as to what's going on where. Mm. And it's really... As the book moves along, as they head down State Highway 1, different bits of the kids' pasts come out, particularly their relationship Mm. with their parents, who were always pretty busy, tended to go off to um, the Cairn Finn Festival and leave them with a babysitter for a couple of months when they were about 13. Sometimes they didn't actually remember to get the babysitter, so they left the kids on their own. Um, and this is based on this is true. No. Oh, no, no, no. oh so, sorry. No, yeah, it's, okay. a com- it's a complete work of fiction. I hope. <laughs> no, nothing like a bit of abandonment for you know the formative stage of when you're growing up as a teenager. Yeah. So it's it's really interesting because th- this is another advanced copy, and sometimes they are a little bit uneven in their mm. presentation, like there's the odd typo. But there are various bits of this book which just there seem to be complete um, disconnects between what was happening to Alex and what happened next. His sister seemed to, she'd disappear for a while and then she'd turn up again. So that's an editorial issue, you think? Well, I thought it was an editorial issue, but as you go along, you start to realise that what Uh. is talking about in the book is not actually what's happening at all. Uh Uh, I won't tell you what's actually happening, but it's, it's very well written, I believe. Um, I mean, it's so this is a bit of a twist on flashbacks that are kind of he's going to play with that as a the flashbacks are real. Okay, it's the present day that's that's a, oh, no, that's a, hey, that's that's intriguing. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, 
Hey, well, that's, it's yeah, so about time a new a good novel with a new setting in New Zealand mm. is, hits our desk. So, yeah. uh, well, this, I, this hasn't had uh, enormous publicity. It's hard for the publishers to decide what to do with a, a new writer. Uh, but I believe this book will have legs. I've never read anything quite like it. Uh, it's but, yeah, it's quite different from anything. Yeah, it's full it, yeah. of drugs, alcohol, and cigarette smoking. Um, mm. <laughs> Sounds like a Kiwi classic. Well, it will be. I mean, he, <laughs> at, at one point he um, he gets stuck on the on the gets lost in a rain or on a diversion on uh, when he's coming down the desert road and, and disappears off to Iokuni and then g- gets lost and finishes up on the Wanganui River Road. Oh, yes, I know. Uh, where he has an accident um, and he spends a few days with a an older woman. Um, no sexual <laughs> in, in, uh, ramifications to that, but among other things, she teaches him, she fixes his car and um, teaches him to roll cigarettes. The thing is, we, we, we're all so familiar with State Highway One that, mm. that, they, mm. that you know the na- we we'll, we we'll, 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 you know readers Kiwi readers will just bring to mind when any name any place name is just going to it's yeah it just rush to our consciousness yeah, absolutely yeah. the description's yeah. pretty good they spend a few days in Wellington which going to places. That I've been to. Yeah. Mm. We're up in Cape Ranga recently. Um, well, just you mentioned before about going to Oakuni and ending up on the road. Yeah. To, through Ratahi, presumably. Mm. Yeah. Over the Paraparas. Well, yeah. apparently, I mean, it's, it's, this is not autobiography, biographical, no. but at some point, Sam Coley actually he's, did that. He's obviously done that. He got lost. Yeah. <laughs> Finished up on the river ride. <laughs> Everything is grist. And I can, I can, yeah, I can see how it did happen. So it uh, races along, didn't take me long to read it, uh, but it's quite, um, it's quite detailed in its descriptions of places and it's, you really got to think mm. all the way through as to where you're up to. <laughs> mm. um, so that's actually a challenge for the reader, so it's not boring, you know, you're not going down State Highway 1, you're having to do work to sort of piece it together. Yeah, to work out whereabouts in this yeah. these kids lives yeah. they currently are is it the present or is it when they were 13 um so you just got to check the dates so you you'd rate this a little bit higher than you know jasper ford and the rabbits and the well i thought jasper ford and the rabbits are pretty good the fact that neither of you two prepared to read it just indicates that your uh, inner, yeah. inner jonathan swift never quite come to the surface yeah. yeah um now the other two books i've brought along are just partly because there are new movies based on both of them, but also just to a bit of nostalgia. 50 years. Yeah, the, the first book is Frank Herbert's Dune. Um, when was he first published? Oh, back in the early 60s. Yes, I thought that it was yeah. through high school. Yeah. Well, hold on, it was 50 years. This yeah. was published in 1970. Uh, I think it, was, it might have actually been before that. 50 years? Yeah, 50 six, years. That would be like in 1970, but I'm sure this yeah. was back in the 60s. You know, you, publishers will do anything yeah. for an excuse to <laughs> try to add a book. A couple of things. Uh, there is a, a new movie uh, coming in December. Um, and also in October, there's a new book called Dune, the Duke of Caledon, which is a, talked about precursors before to the Ken Follett series. This is a precursor to to Dune. There were a number of Dune books written afterwards mm. which I found really difficult mm. because they just seemed completely derivative. Mm. So Dune for people who don't know and if there are people out there who don't they should come and buy the book because it is I, to my mind the best book I've ever read because mm. it is a complete reimagining or an imagining, not reimagining imagining of a commerce um, a whole ecology a whole political mm. system um, based in a galaxy which may be thousands of years ago or thousands of years in the future, who knows, or in a, just somewhere else. So it's it's a major work of imagining. Mm. Uh, it's really um, it's a really gripping read. And there was a movie made a few years ago which I thought was intensely disappointing, but with the new technologies. Mm. Um, 
they it, may be able to um, bring the worms to life a bit better. It is. It is one of the great. Uh, you know, if you're if you're looking at the big ten great sci-fi books, mm. um, it's it's in the discussion, or it's in it's in the list, and and it had a worldwide audience. Mm. Oh yeah, absolutely. Oh, yes. it, it just resonated with. Mm with everyone and uh, I remember I'm, my re- recollection was um, a stunning read and uh, but I, I, these newer books I mean it's, it, he's gone now so they're, they're written by the new book is written by um, Brian Herbert who's his son uh-huh. and Kevin J Anderson who's written a lot of science fiction so the um, I haven't seen it uh, but I imagine it'll be pretty good, mm. um, and it's the uh, the premise is uh, main premise of the book is, is this planet called Arrakis on which there are these enormous like hold it this is this or is it the new one this is Dune, um, yeah. and on there are these enormous subterranean worms they're like a kilometre long, um, and they produce this thing called spice. Mm. And the spice produced by the worms is the key to navigation. The there is a there are people called navigators who if, have access to yeah. the spice coming back mm. are able yep. to fold space, and that yeah. is the key to interstellar, interstellar travel. And that's the key to the whole ecology and economy of the known universe. And uh, it makes me want to reread it now yeah. because I think because the way what the planet is facing now. You know, you're having to rethink what life on the on Earth is like, mm. or will be like, and I think it might have some really interesting. Well, if we do, thought. we'll have to leave. I hope we don't go here. Yeah. <laughs> <See ya. laughs> so, hey, look, two sci-fi books. Well, yeah, it was meant to be. Mm. I think so. Yeah. Now, the other book I've brought along is by C.S. Forrester. Now, I grew up on C.S. Forrester, mostly on the Hornblower novels, mm. and I've spent most of my time in the shop trying to encourage people to read C.S. Forrester and the Hornblower novels. I re-read, I had a small operation in my hand a couple of years ago, and um, I was, couldn't do much for a few days, so I, I've got the Hornblower bind-ups and all of the books in, in three uh, volumes, and I read them all in about a week. Um, I, I read them as when I was way younger I thought they were fabulous yeah absolutely terrific you know adventures with you know a a swagger about them they were good yeah and Forrester uh, he was writing after the war so uh, though the books are are not new but his prose uh, is as readable as ever you know some books date Mm. uh, Mm. these don't Um, and he his depictions of Nelson's Navy were Extraordinary, I thought, mm. and I've been fascinated ever since. This book is is uh, is called Greyhound, and it's got it's the basis of a new movie starring Tom Hanks. It was originally published in 1955 as The Good Shepherd, and it's a book about the uh, North Atlantic, the Battle of the North Atlantic, uh, and it's uh, about a destroyer captain grappling with a U-boat. So those are always my mind <laughs> excellent yeah. reads uh, and it's got this book's got a picture of tom hanks on the cover which should help uh, the movie unfortunately didn't get a cinematic release because nothing has and is currently available i think on apple tv which doesn't mean much to me um, but um yeah so i my fervent hope is that people will pick up this because it's got a picture of Tom Hanks on the cover, <laughs> <laughs> <He looks like laughs> and Kenneth then we'll rediscover C.S. Forrester. From a distance, he looks like Kenneth Bramner on the Dunkirk movie. Well, it's the same outfit, isn't it? Really? It is, yeah. you know, it's sort of like, you know, come on, guys, let's get on the boats. But yeah. um, and who doesn't love Tom Hanks? <laughs> his, his films are, um, you know, they're kind of always. Oh, just the ultimate good guy um, <laughs> doing the best for everyone it's, uh, mm. but I, I, I'm pretty sure I have read that mm. and um, the and, I, and those tales of, of that of, uh, I mean of those convoys um, well, yeah the other book I remember is The Cruel Sea which was oh, a yes, pretty good movie yes. Montserrat yeah. Yeah. And, um, and I was as we mentioning before Dennis Glover 
um, our own poet and Caxton Press, you know, um, he was on those convoys and mm. um, and wrote about them. Uh, not like this, but um, no, amazing times. Mm. And um, yeah, so I'll be, yeah. be I look forward to hearing whether that moves off the shelves. Well, I'm doing my best. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> doing my best for C.S. Forrester, yeah. really. Yeah. Well, that's thank you both. That's been I think that gives us plenty to read <laughs> for the coming times. Uh, I've we've got f- five minutes or less left for mentioning a few podcasts that I really I love my podcasts and one lot of one genre of podcasts I listen to are um, writers' books podcast to do with books and one of my favorite ones is uh, Canadian Broadcasting Corporation uh, writers and company and it's an hour long each week and it is by a woman called Eleanor Wachtel and she interviews writers for an hour and so you really get stuck into what makes the writer tick and at the moment, um, they are celebrating. Apparently, she's one of the English speaking um, English speaking world's most respected interviewers, and they are currently celebrating twenty uh, five year anniversary, twenty fifth years of doing the Writers and Company. And at the moment, uh, she wanted to celebrate the women's prize for fiction and so she's interviewed the current uh, pr- prize w- uh, fiction prize winner for women who was Maggie O'Farrell with um, Hamnet Hamnet and Judith um, but she's also gone back and rebroadcast other interviews she's done with other uh, fiction uh, winners uh, when they have won their prize so she's interviewed Carol Shields um, in 1997 after Larry's party Ali Smith's in 2014 after How to Be Both Chimamanda Nozi Adichie uh, in 2009 Half of a Yellow Sun Rose Tremaine uh, in 2010, Trespass and the Road Home, and Patchett, Truth and Beauty, in 2004. So, and she uh, seems to become, I know apparently she's very close friends with Rose Tremaine, so she talked about her friendship with Rose Tremaine uh, this week when she was broadcasting her previous, her 2010 interview with her. I think Rose Tremaine has subsequently died. Well, there's a new Rose Tremaine book. Oh, well, so I don't she know can't that, have. I don't know that that's been published for us posthumously, but, yeah, we've oh. just had that a week or so, and I'm desperately trying to remember the title and can't, however. Right. So that is a podcast that I really recommend. CBC Writers and Company with Eleanor Hocktel. And, and she would stack up with our, our who's that woman broadcaster? Kim uh, Hill. Kim Hill. Oh, yes, yes. I'd say they would be on a par. Mm. They're both very, very intellectually incisive. You know, they both mm. have done their research. They've both... Mm able to cast widely and ask questions where the mm. interviewees say oh, I've never thought of that before that's a new way of looking at it or you yeah. know so they're very um, incisive interviewers as well yeah no, I mean if, if she's like Kim then that sounds uh, you know a terrific endorsement well, and that might get you into a, listening to podcasts, <laughs> Gareth, or you'd probably be f- prefer to be reading books. <laughs> no, 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 no. It's kind of, it's, yeah, no, no, I'm sure podcasts will find me one day. Yeah. yeah. Now that, because we're running out of time, I just want to mention Yarns and Barns coming up starting in mid-October. Um, check it out um, on the online on your, the internet and uh, 
I got a uh, festival ticket for sixty dollars, so I'm going to almost everything. Mm. So I'm all set. And so next month in, in October, the October um, uh, book lovers' corner, I'll be talking about that um, what I listen to during that. But I think now we'll go back to you, Gareth. About can you review quickly re- uh, mention the books that you've. Um, covered today, and then if you could do the same too, please. Sure, Steve. we looked at four books. Um, the first was um, Mophead um, by Selena Tusalala. Tusitala. Tusit. Oh, it's a T. Tusitala Marsh, um, the winner of the um, well, supreme winner of the the best uh, graphic novel and children's book. Um, this year uh, science fiction um, Max Barry takes us to the edge of the universe um, in, a, in a nice terrific adventure that will uh, please any good sci-fi fan um, the Edward Dox's uh, Let Go My Hand a, a, a darkly uh, wrought tale of um, looking at um, the, the sort of end of life issue and on looking a a, um, a a book about ways of um, going on walks with different experts and what they they diff- how realigning ourselves with different viewpoints um, can reveal s- interesting things for us. Thank you, Steve. Okay, well I've talked about State Highway One, which is the New Zealand new New Zealand novel by a brand new writer. Uh, which is kind of a road trip, but you really need to buy a copy and find out about that because it's really intriguing. And a couple of books from, I wouldn't say exactly my childhood, but from when I was a fair bit younger, from writers I admire, Frank Herbert's Dune, with a nod to the upcoming movie and the new precursor, and Greyhound, which is actually The Good Shepherd, by C.S. Forrester, who I really did cut my teeth on when I was 11 or 12. Um, and uh, he's a writer that I think people should still be reading. Can you see Sam Colley being on the awards list for New Zealand novels later in the year? Oh, I hope so. Yeah, uh, it's, it's yeah, well worth um, well worth consideration. Sure. Great. Well, thank you both, and great for the three of us to be together in the studio. For Not the that we gave you much of a chance, Velda, did we? <laughs> I'm quite happy to s- sit back for a, for a session. <laughs> so thank you for doing the heavy lifting in this session, and we uh, look forward to uh, being back with you 3.30 to 4.30 on the 27th of October, the fourth Tuesday of October. And... Um, So go well and go safely. Thank Thank you. you. Thank you, Bill.